Good afternoon, and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Jan Roller, and I am President of the Board of Directors of the Club. We have just finished our series of debates here at the City Club between candidates and for and against important issues for this election cycle. And we hope you use this information you gained here at the City Club and elsewhere when you vote this Tuesday, November 3rd. In addition to our civil discourse on electoral issues, the City Club hears from speakers on a broad range of important topics, like the one we will hear about today, holistic health and integrative cancer care, from our speakers Dr. Steven Sager and Dr. Gary Dang. Cancer is a close second behind heart disease as the leading cause of death in the United States. But changes are happening in the incidence and treatment of this deadly disease. The National Cancer Institute reported that a new report from the nation's leading cancer organizations shows that for the first time since the report was issued in 1998, both the incidence and death rates for all cancers combined are decreasing for both men and women, driven largely by declines in some of the most common types of cancer. In his work, Dr. Sager is helping lead changes in the treatment of cancer. He was educated in London and is currently a radiation oncologist at the Jurovinsky Cancer Center and an associate professor at McMaster University, both in Hamilton, Ontario, in Canada. He has lectured widely and is president of the International Society for Integrative Oncology. The Society is a nonprofit multidisciplinary organization of professionals dedicated to studying and facilitating cancer treatment and the recovery process through the use of integrated, complementary therapeutic options, such as natural and botanical products, nutrition, acupuncture, massage, and mind-body therapies. The mission of the Society of Integrative Oncology is to educate oncology professionals, patients, and caregivers about the scientific validity, clinical benefits, toxicities, and limitations of these therapies. A few years ago, if you asked your oncologist for a referral to a masseuse, he or she might think you were joking. But not Dr. Sager. In addition to his board certification in radiation oncology, he is certified in therapeutic hypnosis, medical acupuncture, and mind-body skills group psychotherapy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium Ms. Uh, Dr. Stephen Sager. Thank you very much and um, welcome. Um, this is a very important time for us all. Um, healthcare costs are getting out of control. Uh, the fact is that although we are curing more cancers, more and more people are living long enough to get second cancers. Also people who travel through the cancer treatment process and have their cancers cured are also suffering from some of the debilitating side effects of the actual cancer treatment. People traveling on the cancer journey also complain that although their cancers are cured, they feel fragmented and fractured after their treatment. And in addition to that, even though the evidence may be that their cancer is cured, most people want to do everything possible to make sure that the cancer doesn't come back and also to make sure that they don't get a second cancer. So, when we listen to what our patients are saying, uh, we need to take into account the fact that there's a lot more we can be doing for the management of people with cancer apart from treating with the standard treatments which are chemotherapy, radiation and surgery. And it's really about this topic that myself and my esteemed colleague, Dr. Gary Deng, uh, will be focusing on. And we hope at the end of our session that you will all join in and uh, ask some really controversial and probing questions so that we can actually enter into a deep discussion because this really affects us all in this room. Uh, the chances are at least one in three, if not one in two of us will at some time uh, get a cancer and practically everybody in this room would have somebody in the family who either has had cancer, died of cancer, or, or who will get cancer in, in the future. So the way we're going to structure 
uh, the session today is as we should be doing, which is working as a team. And that's the most important aspect of healthcare is working as a team, uh, crossing between the various disciplines, speaking to each other, communicating, and involving you, the client, the patient as part of the team. So I'm going to allow um, my esteemed colleague Gary Deng to take the floor, uh, who will give a broad outline of what holistic cancer care is about. He will talk a bit about complementary therapies and uh, refer to the service that he leads at Memorial Sloan Kettering, where they have an integrative cancer therapies uh, unit there. Uh, Gary uh, is uh, an associate uh, professor at Memorial Sloan Kettering. He has numerous publications, has done a lot of research, particularly using randomized controlled trials to demonstrate the effectiveness of many of these complementary uh, therapies and uh, showing that many of these complementary therapies actually reduce symptoms, help people to return to work and family life quicker and prolong life. Uh, Gary is also the secretary of our professional society, the Society for Integrative Oncology, and in two years time will be taking my place as uh, president uh, of our organization. So I'm pleased to uh, introduce Dr. Gary Deng. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, it's really a pleasure and also an honor for me to be here to share with you guys my experience in working with cancer patients and how to take advantage of some of the treatment that, was, that were not previously made widely available for these patients. And I have been working in cancer care for about 10 years, first at MD Anderson Cancer Center and later at Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. About 10 years ago, Sloan Kettering Cancer Center established an integrative oncology service focusing on trying to address the mind, body, and spirit, all aspects of cancer care. And since then, the service has been developed into a full-fledged department. And why are we doing this? Because I think every one of us has been touched by cancer in one way or another. We know friends or families and so on. And when the oncologist seeing a cancer patient, they discuss treatment plans and what we can do and what to expect afterwards. One common question that came up is, what else can I do, right? So cancer patients want to know more. And then the oncologist will explain, uh, you can do this, you can do that, and they will keep asking, what else can I do? And later we actually find out, it's not really what else can I do, it's what else can I do? Patients and patient's family member wants to do something that contributes to their own care, and they want to be proactive. They don't want to be passive, get things done to them. So that's when they start to explore other treatment therapies, other modalities, including some of the therapies that were not traditionally widely used in this country as part of mainstream care. So these are collectively called complementary and alternative medicine. Just by this name, you can tell this is a very mixed bag of therapies. Among them, there are therapies that are, we think are bogus, has no biological possibility of working. There are also those that have been demonstrated to be safe and beneficial for cancer patients. Uh, there are also those therapies that are in between. They could be risky, or they could be helpful, or maybe they're safe, but they don't do anything. So it is our job as cancer professionals and cancer care professionals to sort these things out so we can give patients evidence-based scientific guidance so that they can benefit from the uh, benefit that came with these therapies while avoiding harms from them. 